What's up guys, you guys are watching Act 1, Scene 2 of our Romeo and Juliet series. Alright guys, so let us kick off right away with a question. So in this scene, Paris wants to marry Juliet, and Capulet stresses on the fact that Juliet is quite young. How old is Juliet? The answer is B. I noticed that some people out there think that uh, she is 14 years old because the word 14 was used in the play, but we have to actually look at the actual sentence where the word 14 is being used. So take, for example, what Capulet says. He says, uh, she hath not seen the change of 14 years. So what this means is he's saying um, she has not turned 14 yet. And if you haven't turned 14 yet, you are 13 years old. So, first of all, Juliet is extremely young. She is only 13 years old. And you might be thinking actually, like, whoa, that is so young. And the whole play is about Romeo and Juliet. I didn't expect that at all. Um, here's an interesting fact. If you actually go on BBC, the average age in which people were getting married and in that time frame, in, the, in that point in time, was 12 years of age for women. So um, she is not actually as young as what we think she is in those days. She is actually somewhat of age to get married apparently, according to what was normal back in those days. So it's a little bit of history for you guys. All right, so yeah, uh, Juliet's father, Capulet, says, you know, she's not even 14 yet, AKA she is 13 years old. And what does Paris say about this? Well, he says, younger than she are happy mothers made. What does this mean? What he's saying is, People who are younger than 13 years old are mothers right now that are perfectly happy. So what he's trying to say is, you know, don't worry, she's old enough to become a mother right now. And if you're thinking like, how in the world is a 12 or 13 year old old enough to be a mother? Well, let's go back to the whole history thing again. I have no idea, but apparently back in those days, uh, it was very customary for people to be married at 12. So. That's, uh, that might come as a really surprising shock to you, but apparently that was the case. Um, probably more important of a lesson for us to learn is that Juliet is being used almost like a commodity. Like um, you, what you see right now is Paris and her father Capulet are discussing what to do with Juliet. And Juliet's not even in the picture. Nobody has asked her if she likes somebody right now, if she's wants to be into somebody right now? Like, does she want to fall in love with someone? Is she ready for that? Nobody is asking her this. She's almost like a commodity. Like, we, we, we could be talking about her and replace her with, like, I don't know, a bar of gold, where the two are talking about, well, how is the bar of gold? Oh, the bar of gold can be given to you. No, it's a little too early. The two are literally talking about her, like she's just a commodity. Is that unique to just Juliet? I would say no, because if you look at how women were treated back in those days, women in general were treated in that way. So that itself is also an interesting thing where if you find that to be shocking and if you find that to be wrong, then well, you know, pat on the back for us that we made a certain level of uh, progress in terms of our society. If you find that to still be an issue uh, in the world that we live in right now, then take the pad off the back again, forget that. Um, maybe we have a lot more room for improvement. All right guys, so the last point for this analysis uh, is the fact that a list of the people who are invited to this party was given to Peter. Now, Peter, ironic as it is, Peter is illiterate, so he's, he's gotta ask anyone nearby who can read to help him identify you know, who should be given this invitation to Capulet's party. And of course, it's Romeo and Benvolio who happen to be nearby. And remember, these guys are of the Montague family. Peter is of the Capulet family. And again, remember, they hate each other. So Romeo should definitely not be invited. But when Romeo looks at the list, he sees Rosaline's name. And remember, Rosaline is the girl, not Juliet at this point, it's still Rosaline, the girl that uh, Romeo absolutely loves. And as soon as Romeo sees her name, he signs himself up and he's not going to reveal that he's a Montague, but he ends up signing himself up. 
in the next scenes you're gonna find that this this uh, actual party is the the way in which Romeo ends up meeting Juliet. So the fact that Peter happened to be illiterate, the fact that he looked around for help, and the fact that Romeo happened to be just there, and the fact that Rosaline happened to be on the list, all of these things contribute to one concept. It is the concept of fate. Now fate is a recurring uh, theme that you have throughout this play. It is this concept of of star-crossed lovers between Romeo and Juliet, like they were meant to be, and they at the same time were not meant to be. Um, and this is pretty much all of Romeo and Juliet. And, uh, and it's introduced ever so obviously at the end of Act 1, Scene 2, with, uh, with Peter, quote-unquote, making the mistake of showing Romeo uh, this list of names that are to be invited. All right, so that is the end of this analysis. And if, of course, if you like the video, then please hit that subscribe and share it, you know, like, add a comment, whatever. And we will see you guys in the next one, which should be act one, uh, scene three of our Romeo and Juliet series.